Our goal is to add a new tool to our tool belt whenever we're trying to solve quadratic equations. Uh, what that tool is called is uh, completing the square. So let's take a look at a basic quadratic equation that we'd be able to solve, no problem. Uh, how about we just make this up? x squared um, plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So normally if we were going to solve something like this, what we would do is we would look at it and we try to figure out what this factors into. Um, and so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be at negative 8 and then add to be 2. And so we could do this pretty simply. This would be x plus 4 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. So that tells me that x is either equal to negative 4 or x is equal to 2. So that's factoring, no big deal. Um, but let's say that we looked at this, and for the life of me, I can't come up with two numbers that multiply to be negative 8 and add to be 2. Uh, and so what I could always fall back to, of course, is using the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula just tells me that if I take the opposite of b and then add or subtract to it b squared minus, or the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, what well, so this will give me are the two different solutions for what x can be. So the question is, like, well, where does this formula come from? Um, and how, how can we solve this without either using this memorized formula or, uh, or factoring it like this? Because, of course, not all... Uh, quadratics that we come upon will factor nicely into integer values. Um, and so so how can we go about this in our way? And the way that it's called is completing the square. So here's what it looks like. We're going to take the same uh, equation that we had. x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. And it's just a, it's just a procedural process um, that we're going to go through. And it's just step by step, and we're going to end up solving this. This will work for any any quadratic whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by isolating my x terms. So x squared plus 2x, and I'm going to add the 8 to both sides. So I'll just get that x squared plus 2x equals 8. Now here's my goal. I'm going to try and figure out what I can add to x squared plus 2x to get it to factor into a perfect square. Or in other words, I am trying to figure out a number that will complete the square. So what I mean by that is, uh, well, if I had, um, what I'm trying to get this to look like is x minus a, so something squared. I'm trying to get to factor in that, which if we expanded this out, it would be x squared minus 2ax plus a squared. So what is the number that I can add to x squared plus 2x so that it does factor into a perfect square that looks like this? Well, so I think about this for a little bit, and what I'll come to is that this can factor into x plus 1, that quantity squared, if I add a 1 to it. And so if that's not obvious, let's, let's go ahead and do this, and we'll see, see what's going on. So if I add 1 to both sides, which is fine, uh, no reason I can't just add the same number to both sides, 8 plus 1, um, I can now factor x squared plus 2x plus 1 into a perfect square. Looks like this, x plus 1 quantity squared. So I was looking for a number, in this case 1, that when I added it to both sides, what I got was a perfect square. And the reason I did this is now that I have a perfect square, uh, what I can do is I can solve this for x. Now I'm down to essentially 1x in my equation, because if I take the square root of both sides, I'll just have that x plus 1 will be equal to, and the square root of 9, so plus or minus 3. So that means that x will be equal to negative 1 plus or minus 3, which means that x is either equal to, well, so negative 1 plus 3 is 2, or uh, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. All right, so this is just another process that we could go through to solve my uh, quadratic here. Uh, no big deal. All right, and here's the great thing about it is that I can also use this uh, to solve any type of equation that I that I want to, or not any type of equation, any uh, quadratic that even if it doesn't come out to be nice integer values. So for example, let's make up another one. So something very similar. Let's look at x squared minus 2x minus 7. Now we could look at this for a while, and we would end up seeing that, uh, well, there is nothing 
that I can do here to get this to factor nicely. Um, I can't think of two numbers that multiply to be 7 because they're only it's 1 and 7. There's no way I can get those to add to be negative 2. So I can go through the same process again. So I can add the 7 over x squared minus 2x equals 7. Uh, I can ask myself, what can I add to both sides here? Um, again, since we didn't really change this much, uh, what I could add is 1. Because if I add 1 to both sides, what I can factor this into is x minus 1 quantity squared is equal to 8. And so then I can take the square root of both sides. So x minus 1 is equal to, all right, the square root of 8. That is plus or minus 2 root 2. And I can add the 1 over. x is equal to 1 plus or minus 2 root 2. So this allows me to solve things that didn't even factor into a nice integer value. Um, now, the thing is, is that, you, I mean, you could be asking yourself, well, why don't I just use the quadratic formula? Um, because that'll give me the answer every time. Well, where do you think the quadratic formula came from? I'm not going to spend the time here to work through this, but if you were to take an example, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, and then just do this process, then what you'd end up finding is that uh, this is a solution, and it comes from completing the square. Um, it, again, it'd take me a little bit too long to, to run through the whole process, but I could if I wanted to, which I don't. So let's, let's just look at one more here. Let's look at one example that we haven't done, which is, well, what if my b value is an uh, odd number? x squared minus 5x, I don't know, plus 5 equals 0. Um, so this is just a little bit trickier. I have to think through what's going on just a little bit more. So I'm going to start off the same way again. x squared minus 5x equals negative 5. Okay, so what is this going to end up factoring into? Well, this we might have to put a little bit more thought into the fact that so my a value right here is half of whatever this coefficient is. So in this case, a is going to be equal to, well, 5 halves. So what I need to add to both sides is the square of a, so 25 fourths. And so this gets a little bit messy, but it's fine. x squared minus 5x plus 25 fourths will be equal to, and then negative 5 plus 25 fourths. Uh, so now, and this might be a little bit less clear to see, but I can factor this. So the point being is that I go through the exact same process. It's just it's a little bit messier now uh, whenever I have odd numbers here as my coefficients. Okay, so this is 24, so 5 fourths altogether. Okay, uh, and then I can square root both sides, so x minus 5 halves. It's going to be equal to, all right, plus or minus root 5 over 2. Now I can add my 5 halves over x equals 5 plus or minus root 5 over 2. All right, so that's the process of completing the square. All I really need to do is just uh, you know isolate my variables, uh, figure out what the number is I need to add to them uh, so that I can factor it into a perfect square, and then uh, square root and solve. Um, so this is just a process I can go through each time to solve a quadratic uh, equation um, if I don't want to either factor or use the quadratic formula.